Good day! Our today's topic has something to do with the introduction of starch and cereals. And with that, let me start with making you aware of the different objectives of this lesson. These are follows. Number one is to identify tools, utensils, and equipment in starch and cereals preparation. Second, identify the types and sources of starch. And lastly, understand the properties and reactions of starch. To give you introduction, cereals are usually starchy pods or grains. Cereals, cereal grains are the most important group of food crops in the world. Rice, wheat, and corn are the three most cultivated cereals in the world. We have already discussed lesson on tools, utensils, and equipment. Just remember that the success of cooking starch and cereal dish depends on the proper tools and equipment used in the preparation of food. Now, let's move on to the classification of starch. The parts of plant that store most starch are seeds, roots, and tubers. Natural or native starch, meaning to say there are oh, there is no alteration or modifications that happen to the starch. It's like you just eat a, fit, a fresh cereal or greens and from that you can get natural starches. Again, when we say native or natural starch refers to the starches as originally derived from its plant source. Next is modified starch. Means something has been changed from its natural source. For example, you cook rice. There is already physical or chemical change that happened. That is already considered as modified starch. Next, number three, purified starch may be separated from grains and tubers by a process called wet milling. This procedure employs various techniques of grinding and screening to separate starch from fiber, oil, and protein. Now to give you information more of starch and cereals, let us discuss the structure and composition of starch. There are two types of starch molecules, the amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is a long chain-like molecule, sometimes called the linear fraction, and is produced by linking together 500 to 2,000 glucose molecules. This is also responsible in gelling characteristics of starch when they are cooked and cooled, while on the other hand, amylopectin has highly branched, bushy type of structure. Cohesion or thickening properties are the contribution or, con or the contribution of amylopectin when a starch mixture is cooked in the presence of water. Now, since you are familiar with the starch molecules, let's discuss the properties and reactions of starch. Number one is gelatinization. It is the sum of changes that occur in the first stage of heating starch granules in a moist environment, which includes swelling of granules as water is absorbed and disruption of the organized granule structure. This means this will take place when starch absorbs water and be heated. Once the starch is combined with water, or any liquid content then heated, the process is called gelatinization. Next is viscosity, the resistance to flow, increase in thickness or consistency. When the newly gelatinized starch is steered, more swollen granules break and more starch molecules spill causing increase in viscosity and thickness. This reaction is the result of its amylopectin content. When starch and water has been combined and can be stirred, it is called viscosity. An example of this is butter, 
or pancake mixture. Though the mixture is thick, still it has the ability to flow. Next is retrogradation. Means losing of water or moisture content after gelatinization. For example, in making breads, retrogradation expels water from the bread structure. Water will then evaporate in suitable condition, at suitable conditions to leave the bread structure, causing the bread to lose moisture. Hence, the bread will be more dry and may be undesirable in terms of taste. Number four is Sineresis. It is the shrinkage of a gel and subsequent loss of liquid. Gels affected by Sineresis more quickly if exposed to protein. An example of this is a lemon meringue to starchy lemon meringue filling reacts to Sineresis quickly because it is exposed to protein in the meringue. Another example of Sineresis is a scrambled egg, which, if overcooked, shrinks and produces a liquid. Number five, we have dextrinization. Best example of this is when we are preparing brown sauce or gravy, where flour, an example of starch, were toasted or pan fried first without any fat or liquid content. When they become brown, the process is called dextrinization. Next is hydrolysis. This is promoted by prolonged heating of starch with acid. This can happen when cooking an acidic food such as pineapple pie, resulting in reduced viscosity or firmness of the pie filling. That ends our lesson. Thank you.